Out of all the interesting characters we meet in Elden Ring, I don't think there's any doubt to say that the Living Jars are among the most popular. I mean, as soon as we saw the Summer Games Fest trailer for the first time, everybody fell in love with the Pot Boys. And it's no surprise. Throughout the Dark Souls games, some of the most popular characters have been the Katarina Knights. With their joyous and bombastic personalities and equally goofy appearance, it reasoned that we'd get a character like that in Elden Ring. And this time around, that friend and heroic partner is named Alexander. Oh, my stars! I'm so happy to see you. I am Alexander, also known as the Iron Fist. And as you can see, I'm stuck here. Alexander might be the first pot boy you meet on your journey throughout the Lands Between. He's friendly and cooperative and jolly, but we learn that his nickname is the Iron Fist, a nickname that doesn't really seem befitting of his appearance. But as we get to know Alexander more, we learn that his ambition is to become a great warrior, something again that doesn't really seem to fit based on what he looks like. But as we continue to journey through the lands between, we'll end up learning more about the Living Jars and come to find out that beneath their lids lie some pretty dark secrets. With Alexander being the first Living Jar that many people are gonna meet, we may come to the conclusion that these are friendly inhabitants, and that all the jars are non-hostile. But Alexander is a rare case. As we continue down his quest line a little bit more, he does impart a little bit of knowledge about the nature of his kind and where they came from. Oh, there you me. I'm oilier than a toad. <laughs> yeah, there were countless oil jars back where I'm from, actually. And now I know what it's like to be one of them. <laughs> yes, indeed. I too have a home. Though it is one to which I have vowed not to return. So, I thought I might look out from atop the cliff. But as I drew closer and closer, pow, wouldn't you know it, I was perfectly stuck in that blasted hole. Alexander tells us about his home that he vowed never to return back to. The reason is unclear, but as we continue down the cliff, we can find that home. A cute little town known as Jarburg, where all the living jars are happy, dancing around flowers and sleeping in the grass. Jarburg seems like a perfect place for its inhabitants, so why would Alexander ever want to leave? It's never fully specified, but I think we have a pretty good hint lying on the southern side of the town. If we venture over past the house on the southern end of Jarburg, we can find a a hint into the dark secret of the living jars. A graveyard lies nearby, but not a graveyard for jars, a graveyard for people. And we finally learn the true nature of the living jars. Alexander told us that his ambition was to become a great warrior, but he never really told us how he was going to do that. But the means to his ambition are revealed later on when he faces his toughest challenge. To think I could face a great champion of the shattering, a demigod in the flesh. Oh, God. In truth, I quiver at the thought. Such is his frightful repute. But the fear simply assures me the ordeal is worth undertaking. Be sure to get a good vantage, my friend. I, Iron Fist Alexander, do hereby vow to unflinchingly brave this ordeal. Ah, hello there. Well... It was a battle marvelously fought. You are well and truly a champion, friend. I, on the other hand, am nothing but a crock. One hit was all it took to crack me, and for my insides to come spilling out. After that, I... I hid like a coward. And as such, I can hardly stand to face one such as you. Ah. <sighs> But don't you think I've given up just yet? As luck would have it, there's a veritable mountain of warriors' bodies right here. If I can just squeeze this bunch down inside me, I'll be a mighty warrior again in no time. And you know, the bodies found here are exceedingly fine. Who could expect any less from the very warriors who fought in the Shattering? The greatest of all wars. Hm. Just you wait and see, friend. I'll grow even stronger. Just you wait when next we meet. <laughs> 
It's from this scene that we learn what's inside the pots, bodies, and within Alexander, the bodies of great warriors. And it tells us that by ingesting these bodies, he in turn gains the strength that they once had. And with this knowledge, and with an observant eye, we can start to notice that we find the pots in catacombs and around graveyards, in places of death. And when we kill them and crack their vessel, it makes a lot more sense why they explode the way they do. And why they drop items like the exalted flesh and chunks of meat. It's because they're scavengers, seeking out the bodies of the dead to sustain their being. But to me, the most interesting thing about the living jars is perhaps how they have this ability to ensnare souls in their vessel. You may have noticed that catacombs and graveyards aren't the only place we can find them. If you venture to a minor Erd tree, you'll find tons of old, giant, and cracked living jars, empty of their containments and soulless. So the question becomes, why are they here? And why would their insides be gone at the minor Erd tree? And I think the answer lies in their decoration. If we take a look at the icon on the lid of the living jars. We can see that it bears a crest of the Erd tree. Now that alone isn't too interesting, but it's when we take a look at how the Erd tree sources its power, things start to make a bit of sense. In the closed network test, we had the ability to talk to Sorceress Selen, and one of the lines she told us was that in order to cast Glintstone Sorcery, they had to make use of Golden Amber, and that Golden Amber was the dried sap of the Erd tree. That Golden Amber derived its power from the ancient life found within. It becomes apparent what that ancient life is as we go into dungeons and encounter the deep roots filled with bodies. So it would make sense if these potboys were venturing to the minor Erd trees to offer their innards as sustenance for its growth. And perhaps that is why Alexander didn't want to stay with his other kind, but instead wanted to keep the power for himself in order to make himself a great warrior. But as of right now, that's where I'm at with the theory. I didn't want to get too deep into spoilers with Alexander's storyline, because the game has only been out for a week now, and I know not a lot of y'all are that far yet. But there is something much more interesting about the Potboys that I may say for another video, and that's their possible connection to the Crucible Knights. Because the Living Jars may be a direct reference to the idea of the Crucible and Alchemy. Because the theory goes that Alexander may be both the Crucible and the Homunculus at the same time. But that'll be part of a much larger video referencing the influence of Alchemy, with all the new findings we've gotten with the full game. But for now, I just wanted to touch on this cool lore that I found, and I hope you guys can look forward to that other one. But for now, that's gonna pretty much do it for the video and I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please leave a like on it and subscribe if you're new around here and I'll catch you in the next one.